So I'm at the local computer store and I don't know what to do. Do I choose the Ryzen X or the Ryzen XT? Which one's more extreme? I gotta say, my patience for AMD's crazy naming schemes is starting to wear a little thin. You know, first they, ha ha ha, so funny, copied Intel's chipset naming scheme for AM4. Then there's the 3000 series Ryzen mobile CPUs that aren't third gen. And now they're bringing XT, their higher performance suffix for graphics cards to three new entries in their CPU lineup. I just can't wait to have my search results for fifth gen Ryzen processors full of Navi Radeon graphics cards. But rant over, these new chips are in fact higher performance. So let's see what they're all about, shall we? Just like we're gonna see what our sponsor's all about. Glasswire is the tool that shows you which apps are slowing down your connection in real time. It's used by security pros to monitor for malware, block bandwidth wasters, and detect suspicious activity. Get 25% off at the link below. Okay, that bit about being in the store and being confused, that's real. The new XT chips are not a replacement for the X series processors. AMD made that very clear to us in our briefing. And in fact, the X series is going to continue to sit on store shelves right alongside the XTs for the same price. Now, you could be forgiven for thinking that this is offset somewhat by the cost of the cooler that they don't have to include in the box for the XTs except that the Ryzen 5 3600 XT does in fact come with a cooler in the box, meaning that unless you're getting a really good deal, there's even less reason than ever before to bother with the 3600X. In fact, AMD's reasoning for not including a cooler in the 3800 XT and 3900 XT that most consumers who buy Ryzen 7 and Ryzen 9 will probably buy an aftermarket cooler anyway, makes sense and more or less obsoletes their X series equivalents as well. So what are they doing? When pressed about this, AMD responded that they are giving consumers more choice by doing it this way. And that while the suggested retail price is the same, they're gonna leave the exact pricing up to the vendors. That's a strange way of handling it, but they hammered home this choice angle by proclaiming that the Ryzen XT series doesn't even require a BIOS update, which means that even OEM motherboards, like the kind you might get in a pre-built gaming system and that probably won't get regular BIOS updates, can make use of these new CPUs as well. I mean, fair enough, I guess, but this is still gonna cause a ton of confusion on forum threads all over the internet. So, what are these then? AMD says that the XT chips are the result of the maturation of the seven nanometer manufacturing process and the experience that they gained in producing third gen Threadripper, which is allowing them to not only improve boost clocks by 100 to 200 megahertz, but also to improve residency at those boost clocks. In a nutshell, that means you'll see them boost higher and for longer. Given that AMD's Precision Boost 2 algorithm relies almost exclusively on thermal and power budget for boost in the first place though, what exactly that means is something we're going to have to discover for ourselves in the real world. To do that, we filled our water bottle from LTTstore.com and gathered no fewer than eight CPUs with the lion's share of them being AMD to see how they tick. Without a BIOS update, it definitely does boot up. So let's see how AMD's claims hold up performance wise. Well, we have a look at the graphics stop, stop. and they- There's a new BIOS, it's optimized. Again? Yeah. It... See this doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I know. The Ryzen 9 3900XT is going slower than the 3900X. It that shouldn't doesn't... be possible. No, it doesn't make any sense. So we might have to call it through review. Well, no, wait, hold on a second. No, no, I, I think we're okay. I mean, AMD said we don't need a BIOS update in the first place, and our older BIOS performs better with the XT, even if the optimized one is worse. No, I, I think we're good. We're gonna go ahead with AMD's guidance. We're gonna use our original BIOS. Okay. Yeah, so maybe down the line, you'll see some performance gains with tuned BIOSes for these XT chips, but for now, we're going to evaluate as is, especially because things are looking pretty good. 
AMD has managed a measurable performance improvement in gaming, far more than you might expect from a mere 2% clock improvement on the 3900 XT and 3600 XT. And in fact, the Ryzen 9 3900 XT is now just shy of Intel's Core i5 while having more cores than either of Team Blue's ships, which is darn impressive given that CPU is sometimes faster than its Core i9 cousin when it comes to gaming. Overall, depending on the game, these new CPUs manage anywhere from negligible to 10-ish percent improvements over their X-series counterparts. The new hardware accelerated GPU scheduling feature in Windows 10 might help things even further in the near future. And we're gonna be diving into that soon, so make sure you get subscribed so you don't miss it. Unsurprisingly, these performance improvements also spill over into productivity where scores are measurably higher and consequently, AMD ends up pulling farther ahead of Intel than before. We're looking at just shy of a minute shaved off of the Firefox compile test for both Ryzen 9 and Ryzen 5, and where the performance makes a real impact is in Creative Cloud, where we see significant gains by reaching for the XT versus an X. Our Ryzen 9 3900 XT pulled off a staggering 18% higher score in Photoshop with its mere 100 megahertz boost clock improvement. But then, while the Ryzen 5 pulled off better times in Blender, the Ryzen 9 seems to be no better off than before. So what's up with that? Maybe our thermal performance charts can shed some light. In Blender, we found that the 3900 XT displays some of that stay boosted higher and more often promise in the early stages, but it hovers between 4.1 gigahertz and the 3900X's four gigahertz and eventually tapers off to mostly four gigahertz by the latter half of the run. Then when we look at the power draw, it's pretty baffling. It's drawing far more power for the same or a slightly higher clock speed, about 145 watts. That's well above both its rated 105 watt TDP and the X's maximum of around 140 watts when it drops to four gigahertz. That translates into significantly more heat output. And with an H115i, our 3900 XT landed about 10 degrees Celsius hotter than the 3900X on the hottest die. The same thing doesn't happen though with the lower end XT chips, which maintain their higher performance level over their X counterparts throughout the run. And I got a level with you guys here. I don't really know how to interpret that. It could be that power delivery is wonky on this older firmware for the high core count chip, and it could be that it's something that's fixable in the future. Or it could be that higher thermal output means that Precision Boost 2 is simply dropping the turbo down sooner than those lower core count chips. If it's power related, I don't expect that this will be a problem with future firmware revisions, as the 3950X with 16 cores runs fine in this particular board. But your mileage may vary a little in terms of thermals and sustained performance on launch day. On the subject of launch day, after AMD retired their original StoreMI solution based on a Modus Fuse drive, which allowed you to accelerate a hard drive with a solid state cache, they teased that a new solution would become available this year and it's launching now. StoreMI 2.0, AMD's internally developed read-only caching solution is apparently a whole lot easier to configure with support for any size of SSD and hard drive. It's purely done in software, which should mean it's compatible with anything, but right now it only supports third gen Ryzen chips on the X570 chipset. As for why, AMD says they're going to gradually roll out support for other chipsets and CPUs. So either they're artificially limiting the software feature to try to add value to X570 in the wake of the B550 launch, or they want their most enthusiastic customers to participate in a beta program. The good news is that given that it's a read-only caching solution, any data that you store on it shouldn't be at risk. So I don't know, give it a try and let us know how it goes over on linustechtips.com in the forum. Overall, this launch feels like a strange sort of weird message from AMD. They're not replacing the X series processors or formally discounting them. So the bad news is that it's kind of confusing but the good news is that the only difficult part of our original choice is whether we wanna take advantage of the marketing kickback programs or bundle deals that AMD seems to be hinting at or pony up MSRP for a little bit more performance with an XT. 
You know, the cynic in me actually, totally going off script here, might say that they're keeping the old SKUs just so that they can have like more shelf space taken up by AMD products. I've seen moves like that. There was a really dark time in the GPU space when graphics card boxes started to get like this, literally this big. I, I remember, uh, Oh, chain tech, chain tech used to have these gigantic graphics card boxes. Remember, this is before the cards were even dual slot, even. Like there was no reason for it whatsoever, other than to make it take up as much space as possible. So yeah, it could be that as well. Speaking of things it could be, it could be time for our sponsor. If you're in charge of your company's server storage, check out our sponsor, Keoxia. Their CM6 Enterprise NVMe SSDs are PCI Express 4.0 and NVMe 1.4 compliant. They come in two and a half inch form factors with up to 12.8 terabytes of capacity and can sustain 1.4 million IOPS and over 6.9 gigabytes per second. They're made with 96 layer 3D TLC memory and can sustain and recover from a simultaneous two die failure. That sounds pretty good. So check them out at the link in the video description. So thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed this video, go check out our recent video on what it takes to cool Intel's Core i9-10900K. You might've noticed we didn't criticize AMD too hard for the extra power draw or the extra 10 degrees because they were already in pretty good shape. As for Intel, that thing can draw over 250 watts. Whew, spicy.